We've talked a lot about annual cropping systems right now. I want to kind of shift focus to talking about maybe the end goal that some of you have expressed. The idea that we go back into a perennial system. So there's lots of things that we can do in a perennial system in terms of what we want to grow. So some of you might consider going back to alfalfa for hay production or a grass hay field. Um, with that in mind, one of the things that we're working on here at the r &E Center is looking at expanding our grazing windows, kind of like you would think about in a cover crop mix. Um, historically, this part of the state has had some warm season perennial grasses in it. Uh, some of those species are ones that you can now find more commonly only in the tall grass or mixed grass or short grass prairies. So that's things like big blue stem or Indian grass. Um, so anyway, what we wanted to do was take the concept of, of a diverse system um, that you can use to extend your grazing window. And so the way that we thought about doing that was including warm season grasses um, and mixing those with your typical cool season perennial grasses that are common in most of your grass hay fields um, or your pastures. And so this is a really exciting study because I think what you're going to see as you walk through these plots is that this might be a viable option. One of the benefits to having warm season grasses in your system is that they can take advantage of the heat that's common in parts of the summer like right now and not cure and dry out as fast as some of these perennial grasses. So in this study we paired 11 different varieties of warm season grasses with uh, meadow brome and we interseeded those and then grew them alone. This was the trial run of that study that you're looking at here. We had some drill issues and so um, everything behind you was this study uh, but we had to redial in our drill, figure out how to pass some of those warm season grasses through a drill, and we reseeded that study um, both under irrigation and dry land. And so while it doesn't look like there's much to see behind you, I will say that the results so far have been really exciting and really promising. I've had about six to seven warm season species that grew, um, emerged, and are looking like they're going to make a substantial amount of forage, especially under a dry land situation. So what I'll have you do is if you want to walk along here, I'll point out some of the plots where you can see some of the species that did come up in spite of our drill issues. Um, and I can point out some of those species to you and you can kind of see for yourself what the production value might look like. Um, so this is one plot. This is an Indian grass variety. As you can see, it, it emerged, um, but it's not putting on the tonnage that you would want in a hay production system. So maybe it's not an option we look at going forward. This plot, there's some blue stem grasses in here. This next plot has some more of those interseeded. You can see that they are, as of this last week, finally starting to cure. Um, and this is a plot where it was interseeded. I think the most promising plot is down here. If you look at this. And the amount of leaf that's in some of these species as compared to some of our cool season grasses, it's pretty phenomenal. Um, in here there's some cytoke drama, there's some big blue stem, there's some Indian grass, uh, there is some switchgrass. There's a whole bunch of different species in here that came and grew and are showing quite a bit of promise in terms of production value. The question going forward in the studies where it actually established will be what's the forage value of these grasses and then can we plant them with some relative ease and then grow them enough to get some of the seed costs down. <coughs> um, so warm season grasses are kind of expensive when you go to plant them compared to some of our uh, cool season species where there's lots of seed production uh, that's ongoing with those. Uh, but you're, feel free to walk around and look at some of these. You can feel them and dig through this. I think it's really exciting, something that if you want to come to our field day next year, we should have lots of, of, of these plots up for you to see. And we should have a really good handle on, on what's producing and maybe what some of the forage value of some of those grasses are. Are, there, are these, are they native to Wyoming? So they're not, they're not all native to Wyoming. There are some of these species that have, um, so like little blue stem is common in Wyoming. There's side oats. side oats is in Wyoming. Big blue stem is in Wyoming in some spots. Some of the, like the switchgrass and the Indian grass doesn't quite make it this far. 
Um, but most of these are, are varieties that were released outside of Wyoming anyway. Uh, but they're bred for similar environments as ours. Um, probably little blue stem is the one if you drive around the state or this corner of the state you'll see the most commonly and it probably has the least feed value of most of these warm season grasses. And ironically it's one of the ones I've had the most difficult time getting established. <laughs> so for whatever that's worth. <laughs> yeah. Because everything loves it when it's super super little. Yeah. Right? Like everything loves it when it before it does anything. Well it greens up and, it, and it, it does pretty good for a while, but I think when it cures and dries, it must lose quite a bit of its feed value. 